Presidente, Senhoras e Senhores Deputados, caros amigos, é com enorme prazer e confesso alguma emoção que me apresento hoje perante vós. Peço desculpa para continuar numa das línguas de trabalho desta Casa para precisamente conseguir uma comunicação mais direta com os membros aqui presentes. Portanto, passarei a falar em inglês. I spent 12 years as a member here and enjoyed every single day here in the heart of Europe. What a pleasure to see old colleagues from the ECON, from REGI, from budget committees. Today, I am honored to present a proposal for our work together for the next five years. As a former member of this parliament, I understand the importance of the work you do. I truly believe that only by joining forces can we build hope and trust in the European project for all Europeans, wherever they were born. I pay tribute to my predecessor, Corina Kretsu. Corina, your motto was no region left behind. I will make it my motto too, adding, of course, my own energy, my own experience. Today, this motto is more relevant than ever. Globalization, digital revolution, climate change, all of them risk leaving regions behind. There may be opportunities in the long term, but the change is painful. I saw this pain with my own eyes as a junior economist in the late 80s, responsible for a pilot cohesion program. It was a difficult time for the textile industry and a difficult time for communities who depend in the, on this industry. We have seen it again very recently in the aftermath of 2008. Some of you are still seeing it today. Different industries, different places, but we all know the story. Never forget the closed factories, the lost jobs, never forget squeezed wages, squeezed pensions, never forget the bright young people who live. Cohesion is at the heart of the European project and reform with cohesion must be at the top of our agenda. As globalization and ever faster technology change put extreme pressure on local economies. Honorable members, I believe in this policy because I have seen its impact on the ground. From my time as a young economist in development to my time as regional planning minister, I have seen cohesion policy as a lever of change across Europe, and for some regions, the only lever available. From the Arctic to the Mediterranean, from urban areas to formal industrial regions, from coal-dependent regions to the outermost regions of the EU, from mountain regions to rural areas, from border regions to peripheral coastal areas. Europe must act and be seen by citizens to act. An economy that must work for people with intervention tools tailored to the need of each territory, helping the transition to a digital, green, and gender-balanced economy. No region, no person left behind. So, honorable members, I am honored and thrilled to be called to this portfolio. Our president-elect, Ms. von der Leyen, has entrusted me with six key tasks. Some are rather urgent. First, the legislative framework. Ms. von der Leyen emphasized, and I agree, the need for swift agreement so that programs can be up and running on day one. I count on your immediate support. Let us work together. A new Just Transition Fund will also be an immediate task, inspired by a parliament proposal to support regions where the transition to a climate neutral economy is more challenging, namely industrial, coal and energy intensive in regions, you will be hearing from us soon with a commission proposal in the first 100 days. My second task, smooth implementation. My mission letter is crystal clear. 
the future policy should be modern, simple to use, and lead to high quality investment. We must work closely with member states in simplifying and streamlining procedures without jeopardizing the quality of controls. Sectoral and centrally managed, managed programs must, much, must also play a role, taking account of spatial impact and, as far as possible, creating effective synergies with cohesion policy. The Commission proposals are ambitious. For example, simplify cost options, freeing small beneficiaries from keeping mountains of invoices for years, saving up to 25% in administrative costs. We will be checking if these measures deliver as promised. I see you as my ally in delivering these and other simplifications. My third task, reforms. Monetary union is challenging, particularly when countries differ in competitiveness, particularly also when they face different economic and social circumstances. Achieving sustainable, long-term convergence founded on competitiveness is our key goal in this context. Investments and reforms have a crucial role here. Therefore, it is high time to restart the discussion on the new, on the new investment support instruments, the reform support program, and the budgetary instrument for convergence and competitiveness for the euro area. The euro is the currency of Europe. We must offer timely support to all those countries which have already joined the single currency, as well as to those seriously working to join. Reforms must be aligned with the European semester, but they, may, they must also be proposed and endorsed by the country concerned. Their scope must be the removal of bottlenecks to sustainable growth and convergence, stimulating higher levels of competitiveness, through the support of national programs, going from modernizing public administration to reforming the education and training system or improving forest management. Reform and cohesion must work together. They must reinforce each other, not come at each other's expense. Taxpayers should not fund policies which contradict or ignore each other. I am committed to work closely with the Parliament, and I believe these instruments should follow the community method. Your support will be key. We must work together to make visible progress in the first 100 days and to adopt the programme in time. My fourth task, sustainable development of cities and urban areas. The upcoming review of the EU urban agenda is an opportunity. Cities today, are often the home of poverty, of exclusion, inadequate housing, inefficient transport, and aggressive damage to environment and climate. These all call for our attention, but there is an opportunity too. Cities can lead, must lead, in the digital and green economy. The opportunities are there, and we must seize them in close cooperation with national and local partners. I will kick off the discussion at the Cities Forum January 2020 in Porto. If you can make it, I would love to show you my hometown. My fifth task, fully exploit the treaty provisions for the outermost regions. I recognize the specific needs of these regions. They require particular attention. Also mountainous, peripheral and cross-border regions, but these regions are special. So I welcome the present inclusion of a specific outermost region dimension in no less than 21 different post-2020 legislative proposals from fisheries to research, from transport to climate change. Some of these points have already passed trilogue, others we must fight to maintain, and again, I count on your help. My sixth and final task, communication. This policy has done so much for so many citizens and still it is not well known enough. My goal is to visit the regions to understand local concerns and local aspirations, to encourage faster and better implementation of projects, and to let communities know they are not left behind. In this context, I intend to always inform you when I go to your region. 
In fact, I will regularly update you on all my initiatives. I will ensure a special partnership with the European Parliament, particularly with the committees that are here today. This is a priority for the President-elect, but it is also a priority for me. I have talked about my mission. Let me finish with a few words about myself and what I bring to the table. First, I truly believe in this portfolio and am committed to making it work. My attachment to this policy is deeply personal. I have lived it in every season of my adult life. My academic interests long ago, masters and PhD, were in regional policy and European integration. I learned compelling arguments for cohesion and reform, as well as the intellectual framework. As a junior economist, for more than a decade, I worked with cohesion policy on the ground. I saw its impact on the lives of individuals. More recently, as Minister for Planning, I negotiated the Portuguese Community Support Framework for 2000-2006. The commissioner then was Michel Barnier. Proof that cohesion policy prepares you for anything. As a member of the European Parliament in the Econ Committee, and then as a central banker, I learned the complexity of different key economic files and their interconnection. I learned, too, the wisdom of the old motto, competitiveness and cohesion must grow together for the European project to thrive. From academia to program manager, from minister to MEP to central banker, I bring all these perspectives. The ability to take different perspectives brings me to the second thing you should know about me. I will be a team player. I will work closely with you. I will work closely with my commission colleagues. I will work closely with regions, cities, and local people. The eyes of history are upon us. The first female president, the first fully gender-balanced college, and the first female candidate for Portuguese commissioner. We have shown that the glass ceiling can be broken so that competent women can rise to responsible roles. I will rise to this responsibility. Our team, for all the talents, will make history proud. Finally, I truly believe in this Europe of ours. This started long before my academic work on European integration. In my hometown, there is a monument to Willy Brandt, one time Chancellor of Germany, an icon of European democracy. Each time I pass, I remember my youth, growing up in a dictatorship. Europe meant democracy, and I shared the Mario Soares vision of a free Portugal rejoining the European family. Europe still means democracy to me. Working on the ground, I learned that Europe means solidarity because there is no real democracy if you are deprived of education or health or are socially excluded. Europe still means solidarity to me today. When I became an MEP, I learned that Europe means friendship, mutual respect, shared values, and nations united in variety. Europe still means all that and much more to me today. Honourable members, this Europe of democracy, of solidarity, of friendship and shared values in diversity, this Europe calls on us today. As we transition to the digital age, to the green economy, this Europe calls us to be bold. Bold in promoting cohesion. Bold in reforms so that no person, no region is left behind. Let us answer the call together. Monsieur le Président, je veux répondre à cet appel. J'ai l'honneur de poser ma candidature pour devenir commissaire en charge de la cohésion et des réformes. Et c'est avec grand plaisir que je répondrai à vos questions. Merci bien. Muito obrigada.